Hey there guys, this is Shimasaki here, we're going to be doing a, uh, as for a request that I received, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of Dark Souls 2, um, and I'm not going to be streaming this, this is going to be done um, through recording, so it uh, will appear in the highest quality I can get possible right now. You'll notice that we are playing in offline mode. That way we are not going to be um, invaded by people. We can also go and track our individual deaths and stuff as well. So, we are in the current build for the game, version 1.07, calibration 1.12. This is before the DLC. I do not have DLC for this game, so we will not be do, um, doing any DLC content. So I hope you guys are doing well today, this Perhaps January 12th, 2015. We're going to be skipping the cutscenes because they kind of don't really matter here for us. The uh, thing that actually will matter it will be the gameplay. Now then, I really wish I could go and um, record at 60 frames per second. But I can't. I don't have... my computer doesn't have the RAM for that. However, you guys should still, be, um, still have a pretty good quality as far as video goes. This is not going to be a complete walkthrough, it's not going to be like a 100% thing, so we're not going to be collecting all items. Just uh, just a general walkthrough of bosses and such. Okay. So we have a bunch of different builds that we can start with. I like to go and start with a cleric build. Um, I like to start with a cleric build because it has a decent amount of strength, um, strength and dex to it. Mostly strength because that's what we're going to be starting with and we're going to come back to this later on here. Um, I think I want to go and start with a human effigy for this one. Well, you're able to go and start with whatever kind of build you want to. Um, just as long as you are comfortable with it. How do I go and get rid of that shit thing? One of these buttons. There it is. Alright, so I ended up using a life gem, which was kind of dumb, trying to figure out my command, my buttons here. Okay. So we are going to hit this bonfire because we are going to come back over here. And I'm going to go and remove these. That way in my uh, main hand I have my mace and my off hand has my chimes. Now then you'll notice that there's an X right there by my main hand item. And that means I can't effectively use this here. However, I have the stats in order to go and two-handed. Now then for this run here, what we're going to be doing is... Um, occasionally there's going to be a few bosses that... Um, there's like an alternate way of doing of killing them. Um, I'm going to go and show you like the expected way to kill them, and then I'm going to go and edit things um, down and go and show you like the optimal way to kill them. This is going to go and apply for um, the pursuer, uh, Velstot, um. and a few others. Are you the next monitor? So once we start talking to her, we're able to go and just leave. And uh, we don't have to stay there to stay and talk with her. She's gonna give us the emerald here, or she's gonna give us our Estus Flask. Oh, Dragon Rider, that's who it was. try to keep these videos to about a 20 minute length or so. So for this first uh, this first episode we're probably just going to go and have enough time to go and clear um, the giant. I'm not going to be bothering with um, uh, I suppose I can go and 
case you're interested, I'm also going to go and do um, both Benhart and um, Lucatillo's storyline. Well, I guess uh, what will go and be the requirements for their achievements. And so you can go and see how to go and get their armor sets. In case you happen to be interested in that. I like Lucas. I mean, it's. Visri, I think, is like the best armor in this game. So we're gonna go and. I ran by that one guy. Oh, I ran down to the, by um, that first guy with the sword just to go and aggro him so he will go and start attacking rather than chasing us so we can go and just go and run through everything. I went in and wanted to aggro that one guy before he went and jumped at us because on the ladder, if they go and hit you twice on the ladder, it will knock you off. Let's go and sit down at the bonfire here so we can go and reset them so they won't be chasing us. Over here we have Melentia. Now we don't have any souls to go, so we can't go and buy anything, but we're just going to talk to her a ton. Alright, after she goes and says it's high time that I pick up and move, we're done talking with her. We just talked to her enough time so that she will relocate over to Majula. Now, coming over here, we have a door that says it's locked. This door we can go and break open. What's up? Coming down here, we have a old guy who's on the floor. Um. I don't know what's in this. Uh, repair powder. That's why. That's why I opened that for. And then we come over here. If you're playing in online, over here you're going to find your first uh, soapstone, a small white soapstone. But we're we're picking it up for the Essence Blast shard. Now, then the small white soapstone is a soapstone that you can lay down. And it will go and let people go and summon you over into their world, so you can assist with bosses and such. Blessing, somehow I got that before I fell. We're just gonna drop down over here because we didn't have enough souls to go and buy stuff from Alexa. Now, then, one of the reasons why I like the cleric from the start is that, um, the cleric starts with a mace, which is a very strong weapon. And then um, the cleric also has enough stats in order to go and two-handed, which is a very nice thing as well. So we're gonna walk up this way. I'm gonna roll down over here and jump down across, so we can go and meet Kale, because we want to go and get Kale's key. Stop for the boulder or keep running. Either way, just don't stop. It will kill you. All right, here's Kale. All right, so just talk, talk to Kale a bunch. There's not really anything you have to go and do with him. Um, Kale will give you a key. All right, right over there you have uh, a couple amber herbs. You don't need to worry about that unless you're going with a spell casting build. And even then, like, um. I really didn't have to go and worry about amber herbs all that much, even as uh, um, with my spellcasting um, characters, because typically you're able to go and uh, get yourself to a bonfire pretty quickly. Okay, so now that we got Kale's key and we got the effigy that's down there, we're just going to keep on going. Don't care about you guys. There's a guy up there throwing firebombs. If you throw a firebomb against these uh, bolt, um, those barrels right there, it'll open up a shortcut to you. We need a Pharos Lockstone to go and do anything in there. Here's Pate. We're gonna go and not talk to Pate. Alright, 
You'll notice, um... Okay. You notice the gate goes and closes there. This is a se uh, session that's... Pretty vital for people that, um, are intending to go and... Do... Uh, PvE. To go and get summoned. Early game, it's easy to go and just get wrecked by these guys. As you can see, I am. Probably should go and equip the shield that I just got. I'll go and help. Ow! Stop targeting him. There you go. Let's go and pop, uh, pop a few life gems. Now then we can either go and fight everyone here and kill them all. Or we can go and uh, just run past them all. All these enemies attack in a three, uh, three attack pattern. So once they start attacking, then they'll, um, they'll swing three times. And they have general low poise, so you can go and stagger them um, with a single hit. It's just that there's so many of them all at once there, and you don't typically have the stats necessary to go and um, fend them off at this point. And then if you're thinking about a caster build, a sorcery build, if you come up over to this wall, you can open it. There's a chest in here. And then you're going to go and find in here a sorcerer's, um, a sorcerer's catalyst, uh, sorcerer's staff, amber, they're not catalyst in this game. Finally killed him. Sorry that took so long. So afterwards we're gonna drop back down and chat with Kale. Well, I want or not, not Kale, Pate. Pate. Oh. And he's gonna give us the white sign soap. Now then the difference between the two of them, um, if you go and lay down a summon sign with the soapstone, um, it will allow you to get summoned to another uh, to another player's world. Um there is a difference between the two of them. The uh, small white soapstone will go and allow you to go and... Oh, I just kind of cleared this stuff out, um, out because those firebombs will go and cause an explosion of those. And also to go and pull the ironclad out. Now then, small white soapstone, it will go and lay down a small summon sign. And you will be um, summoned over to another player's world for a limited, limited time. And then you'll go and get normally like a small silky stone as a reward for it. Yeah, that was gonna happen. Let's see if I can get out of here. No, I went and took that too slowly. Now then the white soapstone, if you go and um, use that one to go and get summoned, the regular one, then you're going to go and um, we're going to go and get a token of fidelity. I think that's what they're called. So we went and killed the, um, God, why are you guys all in my way? We went and killed that little jewel lizard thingy over there so we can go and get a couple titanite shards. 
we went down back over there so we can pick up a little bit more life gems and the um, leather shield. I'm going to go and change this out for leather shield. It has much higher defense there. Physical defense at 90 as opposed to 70 or 75. Uh, that's not why I got that. And since we went and talked with Pate, we can go and summon Pate here to go and help us with this boss. As long as you're human, that is. Here is the first boss of the game, the, uh, the last giant. Rather easy boss here. Uh, the key to this fighting this boss is just staying between his legs. And then you can go and alternate your attacks in between his legs. Occasionally he'll go and do the stomping attack, where he goes and stomps down with, uh, with one of his legs. Additionally, he has another one where he goes and stomps with, uh, alternating with uh, both legs. But if you go and just alternate between his legs like this, then you shouldn't have a problem. At about half health, he does this, where he rips his arm off and uses that as a, as a club. I can't, I can't paint. You're, you're in my way, paint. You're ruining this fight here. Alright, so there we go. We didn't really need to summon Pate for this fight, and he actually made it more difficult by making the giant jump to jump back there. So we got the soldier key, and we got the soul of a lost giant. Of a last giant, sorry. And we've got a little bit of time here, so we're going to go and fight the next boss. To go and set stuff up here. Now then, we have um, all the bosses in this game will give you a soul. You can go and either consume the soul, so you can go and have... Oh wow, that iron clad just kind of appeared. Uh, I'm going to go up here to go and reset, to go and sit at the bonfire, so I can go and restore my weapon durability. You'll notice underneath my weapon there's a red bar. That bar will determine your uh, durability for your current equipped item. So when it goes down, or when it empties out, then your durability is dead, and it breaks. Oh, uh, you don't want it to break. If your item ever does break, you need to go and get it repaired. If you have repair powder or the spell repair, you can go and do that yourself if it has not broken. So now that we have the soldier key, we can come over here, and we can open this thing. Oh, and I saw my... Um, uh, when my lunch was there, we could have gone. Okay. We're going to have to come back over here. And then coming back up over here, you'll see that we have another fog gate. Up over here, there's, uh, I think this is an effigy? No. A couple life gems, no big deal. Here is the second boss. This is the Pursuer. We have enough time to go and kill the Pursuer here. There are two pa two methods to go in killing this guy, but he's not really all that difficult of a boss. His attacks are very um, telegraphed, and he takes a while to go and have him swing his attack, uh, swing with his attacks here. So you have like all the time in the world to go and dodge his attacks. If you just, as long as you go and dodge to his um, sword side, you should be okay. Because they'll go and put you behind him, and then uh, being behind him is good because it goes and it takes him like a moment to go and turn around. So it gives you all the time you need to go and um, attack. Now then, that that attack where his uh, sword turns blue, you want to make sure you don't get hit by that. Um, what happens with that is if he hits you, he's going to go and curse you, and also does a decent amount of damage as well. What a curse does in this game is it goes and um, it goes and makes you become not human anymore. You go and lose your humanity. And it has a pretty good range there with the th with the thrusting attack. So you want to make sure that you go and dodge that. Ow. 
That was fast. <laughs> After this uh, kill here, I'm going to go and include another video of this here. Oh, look, he's dagger. I'm going to go include um, another thing here where you can go and see what it's the fast kill for him is. Should go and also show uh, show this off here. There are several bosses in this game that you can go and parry. Pursuer is one of them, and Pursuer is a very good boss to go and parry if you're if you're good at it, because he um, he staggers for like a long time when you, uh, when you parry him. Ooh, wow, that was early. <laughs> Glad I didn't die. Alright, so there we go. Pursuer dead. Yeah! Soul of the Pursuer and Ring of Blades. Alright. So you can go and check out the fast kill right now. Alrighty guys, well here here we are to go and demonstrate the quick kill here on um, Pursuer. So one of the things about Pursuer is he's a boss that can be parried if you can uh, if you know the parry timing for him. Um, parries are always best done with a shield. So that's like when we went and picked up the leather shield. And yeah, so I'm gonna go and show this to you guys. So yeah, anyways, um, when you go and parry Pursuer, he goes and staggers for quite a while. So I'm going to go and demonstrate this for you guys and show you how it's done. So stand right over here by the tire, put your parry off, and run over here to the ballista. And that's it. You go and parry him successfully. And while he goes and staggers forever, you just go and run to the ballista and just shoot him twice. And that's how you go and do the quick kill here with Pursuer. So yeah. I'm gonna go and jump over to the main video here, guys. But I hope you would enjoy that little thing there. Alright, thanks for watching it. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you went and enjoyed that little kill there. Um... Pursuer can be a really quick boss. Now and then, after you go and kill Pursuer, you come up over here, there is a uh, bird's nest. If you come up here and investigate it, it's going, um, the bird's going to appear and sweep you away. Pulling you all the way down over here to the Lost Bastille. And then here at Lost Bastille, we're going to hit this bonfire. And then we're going to teleport back to... Oh, I didn't go and hit the bonfire and... Th and okay. Oops. Well... I was supposed to go and light the bonfire in Majula, and I forgot. <laughs> so that was a pretty close pursuer fight. I don't know why I was doing so badly. I was mistiming all my rolls. Okay, so now we're going to end up back over here in Majula. I'm going to go and pick up a Divine Blessing, even though I'm probably never going to use it. Actually, we're not going to bother with it. Um, right over here, by that tree, there is a Divine Blessing. Anyways, now we're going to light the bonfire. And now we're able to...
would have warped to Majula now. Anyway, you guys, this has been the first run, uh, the first episode here for Dark Souls 2. Hope you enjoyed that with the pursuer and that uh, fast pursuer kill. Um, anyways, I will go and catch you guys late. So you guys have a good one, and I will go and um, join you guys later on for the next episode, which I'll be recording later today. So, yeah. We went and cleared two bosses, starting our game here, and I go and catch you guys late. So hope you guys are enjoying this video here, this walkthrough, and this going to be a little bit longer of the first episode here. So, anyways, uh, we'll go over a couple things next time. All right, Shimasaki out.